Hey everyone, Sakriasen here, and today I wanted to talk about anatomy and how to draw the figure. And as I get better and better at drawing the figure, and I'm by no means a master, but as I get better at drawing the figure, what I notice more and more is that the way I'm drawing has much less to do with the way you learn how to draw from anatomy books. So even though it's like, well, it's utilizing anatomy, um, I'm not really relying on information uh, that I learned from books. And I did spend a really long time uh, learning anatomy and learning the names of all the muscles and things. Um, but what I'm finding is that a lot of that information is irrelevant. And when I draw, I tend to draw things like this, where um, it's easier to draw when you think of things in terms of relationships to each other and not necessarily anatomy. So I thought, well, how do I teach this? Because this seems to come from a ton of mileage and also observation and much less uh, reading something in a book. Um, and so I realized that it's not completely impossible to show what is in my head when I, when I'm drawing like this, um, but it's not what's in, uh, most anatomy books. So, uh, I created this thing, uh, which is a simplified anatomy model. And what it does is it shows you more about the parts that I'm thinking of and not necessarily the anatomy uh, like correctly. Because you can see here, for instance, in the head, um, I think about this front plane, but you'll see there's no, you know, eyes and nose and stuff. That's, that's the anatomy. There's, I mean, there's an ear because whatever. Um, I find it a useful landmark. But a lot of these areas, these planes, uh, that's how I think of these forms. And uh, when it comes to the chest, I just think of it like this shape here. Um, when it comes to the skeleton, I don't think about the actual skeleton. I think about like this type of skeleton where it's um, you have a head, um, then you have a rib cage, and this usually has a relationship. And a trick um, my friend Bob Meatbag taught me is to, whenever you put down the head, immediately connect it to uh, the body in some way. So I started doing that and it took, I don't know, a few weeks to, to get it down. But yeah, it really does help. And also that thing about it took a few weeks. That's just how this works. Like no matter, I can show you all this stuff and say, oh yeah, do this. And you could look at it and it's still not gonna help you unless you put in some, you know, weeks trying it. But anyway, yeah, I get the head in, uh, I directly attach it to the body, get sort of where the rib cage is and the pelvis and then uh, the limbs. And this is usually pretty gestural. Um, but in terms of like a skeleton, I'm just thinking about this, the ribs, the head, uh, the pelvis, and I don't even think of it like just the pelvis. I think of it like just these two discs, really. Like from the side, they look like this. Um, and if you've read Loomis's books, you, you're, you're probably familiar with these two discs. And then it goes into the greater trochanter and the femur, which is the leg bone. Um, so it goes like this. And then it goes down, which is here. Right? So it goes like that. And then it goes down. So... Um, by thinking of the figure in this way and not necessarily overcomplicating it with a bunch of additional, um, I don't know, like all the little bones and stuff, it makes it much easier uh, to draw. And so it can look intimidating with all these things, but I made an even simpler version, which is just sort of what I think of as the head, what I think of as the neck, then the torso, then the arms and the legs. And I think if you get this down um, 
it makes drawing the figure much, much easier. And so, see, when I get a head down, the first thing I do, uh, maybe I'll get the crosshair in, but I also establish that plane of the face. And what that does is it makes this head exist in 3D space. So, it's now, see, this shows, okay, this is the front, this is the side, this is the top, and then this part is uh, the jaw going down. So, now I, I feel this head a lot more. Um, getting the neck in, I usually just connect it with the trapezius right away. So here you can see how the blue area, it's just sort of connected. Like this area I think of as one thing. Um, but you can also think of it as three things here. See how you have, uh, I'll just use another version that I can actually draw on. Um, you have this part here which is the throat, and then you have the sternocleidomastoid, and then you have um, the trapezius. And you can think of it kind of like this, where, okay, so instead of necks are complicated, um, just think of it like, and here, that rhythm helps. Um, just think of it as three things that you need to pay attention to. You need to pay attention to the trapezius and what that's doing, which is this purple thing. You need to pay attention to the sternocleidomastoid, which is this uh, red in this, or pinkish muscle, and it goes from the back of the ear, behind the ear, to the front of the collarbone. So it goes like, this is the collarbone, and these are the ears. It goes from here, and it connects here. And then you have the trapezius, which goes from uh, the end of the collarbone, it goes up and it connects in the back. See here, connects in the back like that. So then you get that. Um, so yeah, getting that in, it makes the neck into just three things. And then what that also does is because we see all the connections, we see, okay, so this comes from the front of the collarbone to behind the neck, um, and that's, gives us where the ear is, and then we have where the ear is. So, okay, so this helps us find the ear, and then from the ear, you can get the top of the head. Um, you can also define that front plane, uh, the top plane, get the, I don't know, this thing, <laughs> the separation thing, which defines uh, a plane shift where, this is like a side plane right here. And then this is the front plane. And then this plane is doing this, like it goes at an angle right here. Oop. So you get those. And then why is that important? Like, why is it important to have all these planes? Well, what it does is if I wanted to actually go ahead and draw a face and I want to tilt it, for instance, like this. Okay, so I'm having the face tilted. And so the first thing I always do is I get a general shape of, of the head. Um, and then I figure out, well, where's the neck going to be? How does that connect to the body? So as I said, my friend uh, Bob Meatbag taught me, connect it right away to the body. So, okay, so that connects to the body. And then worry about, like, fleshing everything out. So, okay, so how does this connect? Well, you have your ear, then you have your jaw. And then this is going to tell us, well, the sternocleidomastoid, it comes from behind the ear to the middle of the collarbone. So we can get that in. And then there's also this one that goes to the hidden ear, like there's an ear on the other side, right? So we can get like that coming around. And then you have the front of the throat, which is its own portion. And then you have uh, the trapezius, which comes around and it connects to the back of the head. And then you have your eyes, the eye line, the front plane of the face, so it's going like this. You have this, so this is defining um, how this jaw connects. And then you have this, which is saying this is the side plane. So when you know all your planes, and this isn't like tons of planes of the face, I. I think I've done a video on the planes of the face, 
Um, but when you have this information down, you can now feel this form and understand like what it's doing. And also if you were to light this, let's say there's light coming from here, you can also know like, okay, so maybe this is gonna be in shadow, uh, this is gonna get a bit of shadow, this is gonna be in shadow, and this is gonna be hit by the light because this is the front plane, right? Maybe the nose gets a bit of shadow here. So, um, I don't know, I'm trying to make it as uncomplicated as possible, uh, but what I realized is like, yeah, it's still kind of complicated when I look at it, like when I look at this. Um, but even so, I mean, okay, so when I draw, for instance, I have this where this is all sort of split up into portions, but really I just think of it kind of all together. So all this would be one thing where it's more like this. And I just think about it split up when I need to, when like the figure's bent or something. Um, so it's more like this, see how it's just like, no, oh, that's just the torso area. Um, and then for the arm, it might look complicated again, but it's just like, okay, the upper arm has three portions. You have the deltoid por portion here, so that's one. Then you have the bicep and the tricep. And there is a, a muscle in between, but again, um, there is a big difference between learning anatomy and knowing, you know, all the muscles and then just the anatomy you need to make convincing figures. It's not the same thing. Um, so, yeah, it's just three for the upper arm, three for the lower arm, or the forearm, I should say. And then I think of the hand as really just two portions, or three portions, I guess. Um, and it's like this with hands. I always think of hands as, as triangles now. So you have a wrist here, right? And then you have one triangle, and then two triangle, the second triangle, um, and then the third triangle. I guess it's four portions, so one, two, three, four. And these are the fingers, and I group them. Um, this is the palm or the back of the hand. This is the thumbs, I don't know, out, thingy, this. <laughs> See, and then this is a thumb. Yeah, it's easier if I just show you my hand. Okay, so you've got this triangle here, 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 right? And it's a triangle because like, see if I do this, it's still pretty triang triangly because these um, knuckles, the bones are going like this and connecting here. And then you have this part, which is its own it's coming off that. And sometimes uh, people block this out as like a square. The reason I don't like to do that is it doesn't tell you as much about like how this is working. I, I prefer to think of it like a triangle and then you add this fat pad. So like on this, uh, you have like more of a triangular shape. Then you add this portion here to, to box it out. But when I think of a triangle, it makes more sense because then when you do things like this, it's more like triangly. Um, and then, see, if I was drawing the hand, then let's say I was doing it like this. What I think of it like is, okay, I think of it, you've got your wrist, and then you've got the triangle here, and then, and it's an organic shape. It's not like you're going to measure this with a ruler, but it's just thinking of the hand in parts. I think of like this part, like the thumb part, and then this is doing this, whatever. And then this part, this one is coming out, and then the rest I just clump together and indicate like, okay, that's where one finger is, that's where another finger is, that's where another finger is, that's where this is. Um, and just thinking of it in terms of these rhythms just makes it a whole lot easier. Because now I have much less to worry about when I want to draw from imagination. Um, I don't have to think about, I don't know, all the bones and stuff. I just think in terms of like, well, you have these portions. You have like this portion 
and this portion and these but at the same time I don't know if this is just easier because I've been drawing for many many years um, and so I can't just say well this is gonna make your life super easy because it's not like this happened overnight where I could just you know see these forms so you have to give yourself uh, time to practice this stuff but once you get it it's really easy to just draw things based on form. So again, like this figure, well, you have a rib cage. Okay, fine. Um, and then you have the lats going back here. You have the deltoid, so let's just deal with the arm. So the deltoid connects around like this. And again, in my model, I showed, see, the blue, how it connects. So on the front, it's like that. On the back, it's like that. So it's like, okay, you get that. And then if you have this, you can also get the chest because the chest and the deltoid, see, they have this relationship. Uh, sometimes you can think of it just as this, like think of this as one shape because these always go together anyway. Like as the deltoid moves up, um, let's say you raise your arm, right? So this guy, get the body in first and raise this arm up. So as this deltoid goes up, the chest is gonna follow suit. So it's easy to think of them just as one, you know, one thing. Now, the reason I like to think of them separate as well is because like it's a weird thing where sometimes these things are together and sometimes they're separate but one of the reasons I think of them as separate is because uh, the deltoid is further behind so it's going to get obscured by the chest in a side view uh, it's easier see here you can see the chest is this far forward and then the deltoid is this far behind right so um, it's important to get that sense of where things are uh, so yeah, so let's say this arm is going up. Well, then what do we have? We have the bicep going around and You have the lats going up and connecting here. You have the rib cage And then you have going into the pelvis. I get these two discs down get the oblique here um, But again, it doesn't matter if you know that it's called an oblique or you just know that okay you have like a rib area and then you have something in between, see here? Like you have the ribs, and then you have the pelvis, and you have this thing in between, which is uh, muscle, but also you get fat deposited here. So, um, yeah, so you get that, you get this part, and then this coming down. You have your, your legs connecting, and these go down to the knees, and just, building the figure based on this. So here's the trapezius, so it goes back into the head. You get your neck, your head, um, and so on. So, I don't know. I feel like there, I, I could just keep going on forever in terms of connections, um, but most of them are outlined here anyway, so uh, I would, I'm putting this on my website and I'll probably already uh, also upload it to DeviantArt uh, if it helps you uh, to get a sense of the figure. Um, but my real point of this is to say you don't necessarily need to learn all the anatomy because you're probably going to forget it anyway because that's what I did. Um, and most of the artists that I really look up to they don't necessarily think of anatomy as the way it's portrayed in books, because the way it's portrayed in books is usually um, something like, okay, let's say this guy, well, we'll give him anatomy. It's like, okay, so you have the, the chest muscle, and it's called uh, pectoralis major, I think, and then it connects here. No, it doesn't even say if it connects, because if it just said where it connects, that's fine. Um, but then they'll say you have deltoids and you have bricep, biceps 
brachii, whatever, when you have triceps, um, and it's more this, just like this, is pectoralis. It's like, who cares? This is orbicularis oris or something? No, this is orbicularis oculi. I think orbicularis oris is around the mouth, but again, it doesn't matter. It's like, ah, who cares? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I feel bad because anatomy is important and I'm not saying it's not, but at the same time, when I see um, things like, I myself will say, oh, as an artist, you need to learn anatomy. And then I feel like, well, I guess people are going to get a sense of, well, I need to go to my anatomy books or uh, watch a huge, super long, hours and hours long video series on all the muscles and how they work and stuff. And it's like, that's not bad. I mean, if you know all that, that's great. Um, and uh, But it depends what for. Because for me, I just want to make figures. I just want to be able to draw figures and have them work and not have to use reference um, and know where things go and I don't know if you uh, for instance you just you have a figure okay you want a figure and you want them to be able to I don't know just do stuff like go you know, raise your leg and have this one come out like this this one come on the ground whatever just She's gonna put her hand on her head or something's fine. Just the ability to do this and quickly separate things. So you've got like your torso portion, you've got your head portion, your neck, ear, front of the face, side plane of the face, front plane, side plane of the body, ribs. Let's say you have breasts here. It's like, okay, fine. But this is what I wanted to do in the beginning anyway, is just be able to create a figure from my imagination quickly and, um, I don't know, sort of correctly, correct enough. Um, and again, you don't need all the anatomy. What you need is how these rhythms work. Like, oh, with the arm, for instance, you have you have a shoulder, and, and I usually always make the biggest shape first. So the biggest shape is the entire arm. That's the gesture. Then on top of that, you break it down. So you have like an elbow. You have your shoulder, and it goes around. Okay. And then you have your bicep here, and you have the forearm muscle that goes like this. And then you have your elbow back here, triceps coming down, connecting back here to the elbow, and then this. Uh, bone goes right to the wrist. So, okay, so now we have where our wrist is and get our triangly hand thing going. Um, and then an indication of where the fingers are, like sort of their gesture, their motion, thinking of them as one big shape, and then breaking it down into the individual fingers. Because fingers tend to have rhythms anyway. See, right now, this rhythm is sort of like this, right? And then if I do this, like if I do this, the rhythm is this one coming out and then these coming towards a point. Like they all connect to a point, see? They're going And if you do this, they all go So thinking of them as one big shape and then splitting them up, it's good. <laughs> Because, yeah, and if you have something like that, right, like, ooh, dramatic. Well, look, they still have, like, one flow to them. They're all coming back to one spot. So you can think of it like uh, you have the hand here, and then you have this flow. And then you break that down into, you know, individual uh, fingers. But, yeah, don't want to make this overly simple, simplified because it's not that, like you still have to draw a lot and draw from reference and things and draw your own hand. But as you think about rhythms and relationships instead of just 
uh, I don't know, names and, oh, I, I read an anatomy book. It's like, so? Can you create a figure from your mind? Um, I mean, you don't have to. Not everybody wants to. But if you do want to, um, you know, how do you do that? And it's by viewing the figure and its rhythms and relationships. And that way you can build stuff, do stuff, do more cool stuff like this. See? Um, so, for instance, I separated this this leg with a line here. What is this line? This line is a sartorius, but it's not really important. And you have all these muscles here, like it goes like this, and then you have this muscle, and then you have this muscle here, and you have this muscle here. Fine. So like, if that's, you can still add to this and add more muscles. Uh, let's say this person, I don't know, likes riding their bike. Uh, you, you get all these additional muscles, but really it doesn't matter in terms of constructing a figure. I don't need to learn um, all this stuff, you know, I just need to, like, it's fine if I just see it as one shape. Um, and then here, like this part's the bone. So that's important. And then there's a bone going back here, but Seeing as how this goes behind, the reason I think it's important, for instance, to know where this connects is because then when you're drawing a figure and you draw a front view, let's say this is the knee, and it goes down, oh, let's just get the entire leg in, and then you have the calf, you can tell like, okay, so this, what, what overlaps what, you know? That's why I think it's important to know where these things connect uh, but anyway, I've been ranting and should have ended this minutes ago. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, feel free to download the thing if, if it helps. Um, and thanks for watching.